Hi, everybody. Tom Bullington here with In Motion Realty, and I'm joined today by Stephen Reed, another agent with uh, In Motion Realty. Stephen, how are you doing today? Doing great, Tom. Great, great. I love your, I love your ceiling. That is amazing. <laughs> it's yeah. We were happy. We thought we when we first moved, we were going to whitewash it, but oh no, grew attached to it. That's wonderful. That's kind of that cabin look. I love it. It, it does. Well, then you've got a lot of star wars behind it so right right <laughs> boba fett's helmet and everything yeah. that's, that's amazing um but today we're not here to talk about star wars we're here to talk about um <laughs> something a little less exciting for kids especially is interest rates and neither of us are we're not mortgage lenders we're not in the financial industry but we are quite impacted by mortgage rates by interest rates and I was looking online today, it's March 2nd. So just if anyone's watching this in the future, it's March 2nd, 2023. And we were looking at interest rates this morning and it looks like it's about in the um, seven and a half, 7.3 range, somewhere in that. Is that where you're hearing it? it is right now, Stephen? Yep. Okay. So it's down a little bit from over Christmas down a little bit so it's still it's still up there um you know we don't have a crystal ball here at in motion realty nor does anyone else but um, we are hearing that possibly into the spring maybe a few months from now things will be things will be picking up a little bit as far as lower interest rates uh more people looking traditionally especially in minnesota here people look for homes when the weather starts to turn a little bit nicer um, and people are just more comfortable with thinking about making a change, kind of a brand new, brand new house, brand new, whatever it might be. Um, so Stephen, I know you've been in the industry for a while. Uh, what are you hearing from your clients as far as um, if they're not buying right now, if they're not selling, why aren't they? Um, and if they are out there looking for a house, um, why are they, why are they choosing to look now? Yeah. <clears throat> so I know that coming out of the pandemic, when we had our, our historic low for the interest rate, um, and then when it started to go up, I did lose a few people who were actively looking, um, just because it started to price them out of the market, right. which was, which was unfortunate. Um, they were all, I think everyone that I did lose was all first time homeowners, which is, um, for me, it, it felt bad to see them have to leave the market. Yeah. Um, but, and then we did have going in for me, at least I saw going into Christmas and into the winter, there was a little bit of a scare because of the rising interest rates. A lot of people really slowed down and it really cooled off the market quite drastically from September on, um, going into December, there was a lot of speculation of us hitting double digits again, mm -hmm. like back in the early nineties and definitely in the eighties. And we, what I saw was, I think we capped around the eight to eight and a half was kind of that, that peak. And now we're slowly starting to dive down. Yeah. Um, which is great. Um, I honestly hope we never hit that three again. Um, Cause with that three came a global pandemic and, all of the issues that came with that yeah but i'm hoping that we can again get closer to that pre-pandemic five six somewhere in there because that seemed to be a very healthy market that a lot of people could enter in and be comfortable in i've been hearing that we're going to do a slow fade out back towards that five that it's going to take a while but it's going to slowly start to creep back down towards that right Right. I think it depends on who you talk to and kind of what the message is for saying what they say. Uh, <laughs> if yeah. you're talking, you know, if you're talking to people that are in the lending industry, they might indicate that, oh, yeah, things are going to be all sunshine and roses right mm -hmm. around the corner. Um, as we know, that does not happen. Uh, you know, life does not happen according to plan, as they say. So we will just we will be here for especially my favorite type of client is that first time home buyer. I'm not sure about you, Stephen. I, I really enjoy that. Yeah. Um, just the, 
there's a lot of good questions. Uh, there's a lot of good interaction. Um, and just to see to see that that achievement for me and to be able to help somebody achieve that dream, um, that's what I really like doing. It's yeah, um, selling is obviously fun and good, but helping somebody achieve that first home and achieve that dream just it feels really good and it yeah, it falls in line with all of my my ethics and all of the work I, I did previous too. So it's right. Yeah. Right. I prefer, I prefer, I, I really enjoy that. Yeah. And it, it really is. It feels like you're making a tangible difference in someone's life when they are buying a home. And especially when it's a, um, you know, a person or a, a couple that is family that is looking at a home for the very first time whether or not they're in their twenties or thirties or even older. Yeah. Um, I've had first time home buyers in their fifties. S- same. Yes. You know? <laughs> and it's, it, this, that joy is still there. And the watching that accomplishment happen is it age does not discriminate when it comes to that, that first giant hurdle. And yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it still, it's, yeah, it's good to see. And it's, yeah, it, it makes you feel good. Well, it's the it's the American dream. It's the epitome yep. of the American epitome of the American dream, where you can, um, you know, work hard, save enough, do you know, play by the rules, and buy a house. You're able to buy a house and either raise a family or just have a house by yourself or whatever your particular lifestyle is. Um, having that home and especially your first home, I remember our first home, and it was. Um, I felt embarrassed that I had a house that had three bedrooms and three bathrooms. It was a townhome. It was in Phoenix, Arizona. And we moved in and we had had a couple of different um, apartments. Okay apartments, not terrible apartments. But the feeling of not having someone living above you. Oh, gosh. And, and Fantastic. Not, and not hearing someone walk. Yeah, above you, or argue, or you know, <laughs> you're in a you're in a parking lot situation where your bedroom is right outside, is right by the parking lot of an apartment complex. Setting all that aside and actually having a house, yeah, um, was was great, and and that's, you know, we were just like, wow, this is this is a lot. We were in our twenties, and this is. I felt a little bit like, geez, did I bite off more than I can chew here? You know, my first house was $63,000, and which which ages me quite a bit. But quite a bit. <laughs> 19, 1991, 1991, not that long ago. No. <laughs> but at, <laughs> you know, I'll just, I'll just say it was eight, eight and three eighths was our interest rate. Okay. Eight and three eighths. And it was for 91. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. We were, I think we were FHA. I think it was, but that was at the time of, and this is like a little history lesson for everyone. Um, that was at the time of the HUD homes, housing and urban development. Uh, the, the federal government basically would buy your house um, and then they would like sell it to a bank or you'd buy it straight from the feds. And we bought our house. It was a bank foreclosure. The mm-hmm. bank owned it. There was a gentleman there that was renting it. And we they put it on the market and we bought it right away. Um, but that's how we got started. And just the ability to tell people their first time, first time experience that, you know, you're building equity. Mm-hmm. This is a great investment for your future. It's always a good thing to buy a house. Real estate is always a good investment. Sometimes it's more affordable <clears throat> than others, though. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm still sitting in my first home, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, outstanding, and you've got yeah. the great ceiling, and you've got the great environment um, <laughs> there to prove it. Um, and I've been to your house. You have an amazing yard and uh, some great landscaping, and uh, you guys have totally made that place your own in a beautiful neighborhood. So in here in Hastings, um, any kind of parting thoughts or, or just little tidbits that you've heard out there, of, especially from first time home buyers or kind of what people are looking for right now? 
I know that the market right around that 250 to three range is still pretty competitive. Mm -hmm. um, and around us, that's kind of your introductory market. We see some stuff below that, but not a lot. Yeah. Um, and then you have these bands of different price bands, and then some are doing better than others, and some are a little bit more healthy. Um, but I mean, the biggest, the biggest bit of not information, but assurance that I've been given and, and I've seen is that things are changing and it's looking better, but also that um, when you buy a home, I mean, you're, you're marrying the home, but you're dating the mortgage. And so you could easily refinance later down the line when things right. get a little bit better. And if you can afford it now, why wait, get in that home, start building that equity, start making it your own and just, and, and just start that life. And if yeah. you can, yeah. And if, basically if you can afford it now, just do it, get what you want. Cause the market's a little bit, it's not as, it's not the same spring market that it was a, even a year ago. No, not at all. And I, I hope we don't go back to that spring market because that right. was crazy. It was a bit much. Yeah. I was watching a national podcast uh, vlog yesterday. So they both have podcasts as well as a video. Mm -hmm. of it. And they were talking about the market and they were talking about just how things have evolved over the last year, you know, a year back, you turn the clock back to early March of last year, still crazy, still multiple offers on a lot of different, on pretty much every offer that you would make, mm -hmm. you'd be competing against someone else. This year, entirely different. Um, interest rates about 3% higher. Yep. 4% higher. Yeah, it's probably more like four almost. It's doubled. Yeah. More than doubled. Yeah. Interest rates, which, you know, if you start at if you start at 2.5 or three, you know, <laughs> but still, yeah. if you're above seven, that's a significant increase over it is. what it was last year. Um, but this agent was talking, it's a nationally known agent, and he was just talking about um the lack of multiple offers this year. And I was speaking with one of the prominent agents here in town. Um, at an open house the other day. And she was saying the same thing that you just don't see the multiple offers. You see homes are staying longer on the market. Um, I mean, about two years ago, I sold the majority of my listings. I sold them in like three days, two days mm -hmm. with multiple offers. And wow, that's great. You know, that's great. But if you're a buyer uh, you were either priced out of it, you know, people were exceeding the list price or they were um, making up for the, you know, like above above and beyond the appraisal value of the home. Yep. Uh, a lot of people paying cash. You know, I think those days are kind of behind us at this point. <laughs> really. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping so too. Yeah. I mean, last spring, you're right. You saw a ton of cash offers, a ton of cash offers, considerably over yep. um we were seeing appraisal guarantees where if it appraised to x you would pay over by y and yep. stuff and all sort of kind of um not goofy but stuff that we you don't see in a normal balanced market but waving inspections yeah oh yeah waving inspections left and right yeah which is is what it is um what do you i, I think you know we'll do these videos yeah. On a frequent basis. But what do you think about waiving inspections? I really try to discourage my clients from waiving inspections. I I don't like, I mean, I, I don't, if I were buying a home, I would never waive the inspection unless it was a newer building or I I knew something about it. Um I might write in there some like inspection gap kind of protection stuff where up until X, we won't worry about after Y, you know, kind of stuff like that. So that way big ticket item stuff is covered. Um, for a home warranty. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. at the, for me, at the very, very least, the, the greatest thing about an inspection, um, and again, for first time homeowners, I really kind of talk up inspections for them. Yeah. Um, the, the great thing about inspections is, is you're learning about your home. 
So when you walk into that home, you already have a base knowledge about it. Especially if this is your first time buying something. I mean, maybe you've purchased a car, a new car, yeah. but you're putting down basically $300,000, $400,000. It's the biggest purchase of your life. Biggest purchase of your life. You know, I've also heard of people, and I've done this a couple times, doing a pre-inspection. Okay. And so, you know, either in if I if I do it or if the homeowner does it or whoever, but we do a pre-inspection. And that way you present there's no there's no secret. Mm -hmm. Just here it is. Um, you know, people that that have purchased a home before know the the seller has to fill out a seller disclosure statement, which basically says, okay, this is everything I know about the house. We got this fixed in, in 2005. We got this, the roof was put on in 2008, whatever it might be. But a pre-inspection is, it's a third party, neutral party comes in, gives that sort of physical of, of the house. So the buyer comes in and they don't have to spend the whatever it is, $400, $500. Yep. Um, I found that especially in maybe a higher price point house knowing that we're an older house especially too knowing that there's already been an inspection there's already been a professional we'll supply the inspection report to the mm -hmm. buyer's agent if they want um and that that sometimes will and i know a couple agents that have done that almost on a regular basis they will do that so there's no secrets here's the product this is the basically what this is everything we know about the product that we're that we're selling um, the other thing is a appraisal and some agents will do this, especially in a, in a market where you're not really sure there's not a lot of comps. Mm -hmm. Um, I I've done this with, especially selling land too. I sold land here about three weeks ago and I just, I got it appraised because a, I'm not, a, I'm not. I don't do a lot of land. I do land. I've done some agricultural land and some commercial stuff, but I'm not the expert. And, mm -hmm. and there also are not lots of comps in that situation. So getting a third party, neutral party come in and say, okay, well, this is what it's worth. If I were to sell it today, this is what I would list it for. Or this is what it's worth. Those, those types of things really take a lot of the mystery away from it for a buyer. Um, so, I mean, there's pros and cons to that, but I like to make it as easy as possible for a buyer to come into the property and know what they're getting. Yeah. Well, it, it helps your, it helps your sellers. Right. And yeah, those, I love those pre-inspections working when I work with buyers, they're fantastic to get a pre-inspection. Um, Cause it's, it's one less thing that your, my buyer has to pay for. We walk into it knowing everything. Yeah. It, on, it helps it helps move that process along a lot faster there's mm -hmm. yeah and it's just it's a very it's it's a good faith thing um i mean i've been working with a group that's um looking to sell a home out in the country with us and like i always tell them is you know what would what would you want what what is if you were buying the home how would you want to present it to you um because they mm -hmm. had brought up ideas because they had um they had to remove some carpet to do some mitigation stuff Mm -hmm. And they asked me like, should we put new stuff in? And I was like, well, I, I would, you know, put it in an allowance for the new people when they come in, when they have the home that they have an allowance that they can put in the carpet they want. Um, Cause yeah. that way you're being respectful to them. And uh, yeah. And the, the pre-inspection to me, it's, it comes down to like a respect thing, but they're yeah. great. I love finding those. They're fantastic. Um during the height of the crazy stuff during the spring, I know that a lot of agents um, and a lot of inspectors would come with on the showing. Mm -hmm. And so you would just book the longest window possible. And then you would pay a reduced fee to the inspector because they couldn't do a full four hour inspection. Yeah. Um, and they would walk through and that's, you're still learning something about it. And that was one way that they were still kind of getting an inspection, but being able to waive it. But yeah, the pre-inspection, I hope that is something that stays and I want, I hope that that is, that is something that we see coming more. It's just, it's more information up front. Yeah. And that's always great. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, Stephen, I appreciate your time today. And we are to the audience here. We within Motion Realty, Stephen and I are very enthusiastic about helping helping our clients. Um, this is something that you know. There's some agents out there uh, that are um, that you may have seen on your local interstate. I'll just put it that way, because we like we we show respect. We're respectful of other people. But there's there's our there are agents and companies out there that are doing it for kind of they would like to see their name up in lights. And our I guess our approach is is more about how can we tangibly make a difference in someone's life? How can we help them uh, make the biggest purchase of their of their life and and be satisfied with it? They have to get up every morning, take a shower, be in their home every single day. Yep. And, and to me, that's a, that's a, uh, a sacred sort of agreement with, with a client. I feel like I want to be a teammate with them rather than kind of telling them what to do. I give options as far as, um, you know, like if there's a listing, I give them a range of what they want to sell yep. it for, you know, what the price should be. It's, it's all in, we're educators, like you said earlier, we're educators. This is not about us, um, you know, it's our living, but this is not about Stephen and I, this is about our clients and about ensuring people have good lives and are safe and are um, happy in their homes at the, bottom, at the end of the day. So, uh, and I know Stephen, that's why you got into the business as well. Yeah. For me, this I see this as another extension of the work that I did when I was a teacher and an extension of the work that I did when I was doing work with nonprofits. Yep. Um, it's another way for me to help people, to be active in people's lives and to make a positive in impact on my community. Right. Um, and it and it's something that I try to live every day through all the other stuff that I do. Um, I know that both Tom and I are exceptionally active within our communities and doing work to help just make it better for everybody. And it's that this is just another another vehicle for me to to drive forth that goal. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're interested in just having a conversation, we're not like the hard pressure salespeople. Um, if you want to have a conversation with me or Stephen, please feel free to give us a call. Um, my phone number is 651-402-6356, and you can reach Stephen at 763-232-4846. Um, give either one of us a call. Check us out on Facebook. Check us out at uh, InMotionRealty.com as well. We will see you next time. All right. Thanks, everyone.